The focus chart and sound section give the projectionist an opportunity to adjust the sound level and focus the lens before the start of the picture. In a moment, the focus chart and music will end, followed by five seconds of darkened screen before the actual picture begins. My country, Ethiopia, with its soaring blue-green mountains and deep verdant valleys, is one of the most beautiful lands on Earth. And yet for centuries, these wonders have served as natural barriers, protecting but isolating us from the rest of the world. The people of our small villages lived in peace and solitude, away from the crash of strife, closing their eyes to new things, even the wheel. But here, too, the winds of change began to blow through our valleys. We have been free for 3,000 years, so ideas like freedom and independence that intoxicated our neighbors like palm wine did not go to our heads. The wonderful world of the wheel, that fascinated us. And now the challenge of change is upon us. This is our capital city, Addis Ababa. A young city, big, bright, modern. Addis Ababa means new flower. It was founded by Emperor Menelik II and symbolizes our high hopes. Municipal Hall is the new center of our city government. But Addis Ababa is also the seat of our national government. Parliament convenes in this building. When heads of foreign states arrive, one can often see the emperor, or at least his grand car. And we are always fascinated by the pomp and precision of the mounted escorts and the imperial bodyguard. Yes, I am proud to be an Ethiopian and happy to be living in Addis Ababa. But if possible, I am even prouder and happier about something else. This is my church, Mekane Jesus Church. I have been pastor of this church for almost 30 years, ever since the Italian occupation. Formerly, I was a priest in the Orthodox Church. I have been in church service for over 50 years. My name is Kesbadema Yala. These are members of my congregation. We are talking together about the fact that Ethiopia is the oldest Christian country on earth. We speak of the work of the gospel of Jesus Christ today and in the past. You see, we Ethiopians have a history rich in Christian tradition. About 327 AD, the Aksumat king, Izana, made Ethiopia the first Christian state on earth. St. Mary's Orthodox Church in Aksum marks the spot where Christianity first came to Ethiopia. From here, it spread throughout the land. Ours is a past full of glory, as this huge obelisk or stele demonstrates. The false door and several stories of windows chiseled in the solid stone 
are thought by some to symbolize the stages of the soul's ascent to heaven. But a testimony to the magnificence of the early rulers, the first Christian kings of ancient Abyssinia. Although for centuries our kings and emperors have been crowned at this very spot, our present emperor, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, was crowned in Addis Ababa. These crowns, so carefully guarded, also reflect the glory of our empire, though later history may have tended to tarnish their brilliance. This is the crown of Emperor Menelik II. He started us on the path of modernization, and for this especially, we honor his memory with this striking statue. Our many fine Orthodox churches, like St. George's with its huge dome and cross, and Trinity Church with its impressive ornamentation, link us firmly with our past, a glorious past, and a Christian past. Yet, despite all this, many of my people still live very simply and do not know the wonderful plan of salvation in Christ. Like the people milling about the bazaars, for most of them the past is dead. The present presses in upon them. In the crowded and colorful markets you can buy almost anything. Bargaining is still very much a part of our daily transactions. And obviously the wheel hasn't yet rolled the weight from some shoulders. In fact, outside the larger cities, the wheel hasn't rolled very far at all. Most people still walk or run or depend on sturdy beasts of burden. In many parts of our rugged country, camels are still commonly used. They make fine pack animals because they need so little water, and their long legs cushion bumps better than any jeep. The straw that broke the donkey's back. When you're walking near desert streams and become hot and thirsty, the solution is simple, and the animals can be easily watered too. My people's way of life is mainly agrarian. Our economy binds us to the soil. The land itself is broken like a crocodile's back into hundreds of small fields. Plowing is done with homemade plows, the metal shoe made of scrap iron and the handle of hard wood. As our Lord said, you can't look back and plow a straight furrow. Although the soil is generally fertile, we have yet to learn good farming methods. The principal crop is teff, a dwarf variety of millet. It is usually threshed by trampling animals. Not exactly a modern method, but it gets the job done. My people need help in so many areas of life. The missionaries brought some of that help. Many of the first missionaries to Ethiopia came to the beautiful Blue Nile Valley to the west in the province of my birth. They were of the Swedish Evangelical Mission. A visit to a few of their mission stations will uh, illustrate what I mean. This is the mission at Mende. We're just in time for a hygiene class. Some of my people believe things about health that may sound strange to you. In this class, they are being taught simple and scientific principles of good health. They listen carefully, despite the problem of language interpretation. Elsewhere, students of the Bible school participate in an outdoor devotional under the able direction of one of the teachers. Some people complain that missionaries are only interested in proselytizing. I contend that they are genuinely interested in helping people as people. Their coming has not altered the laws of life and death. Naturally, death still moves among us. But the missionaries have served among us simply and sacrificially, 
sitting where we sit, suffering when we suffer, as the scripture puts it, weeping with them that weep, holding forth the word of life and comforting all that mourn. Here, there is a large mission hospital. An anatomy class is in session, part of a strong medical training program. The level of instruction is high. Classes are conducted by missionaries and well-trained nationals and cover such things as taking blood pressure, intravenous feeding, and many other important procedures. The Swedish Evangelical Mission also operates a large orphanage for both boys and girls. Some of these children have leprous parents. Some are physically handicapped. Here they are not only provided for, but cared for, loved. From humble beginnings over 100 years ago and in the face of many obstacles, the ministry of the Swedish Evangelical Mission has grown under the gracious hand of God. There are now seven stations in the Western Field and nine stations in Eritrea. From these centers, organized and largely self-supporting congregations have been established. 15 in the western area and 20 in Eritrea with a combined membership of around 25,000 baptized believers. The next to help us in the west were the Lutheran missionaries from Germany, locating in the same general area but slightly south. Their mission is known as the German Hermannsberg mission in Ethiopia. The distance we now cover so quickly and easily by plane took the first missionaries six weeks of strenuous caravan trekking in the rainy season. This is their first station, Ira, where today there is a large hospital. Medical attention is available to all who come and many of my countrymen are here introduced to the great physician. A strong manual training program is also carried on. Although more of my people are in school today, one side effect is a growing dislike for manual labor. Christ dignified honest labor, and so have the missionaries. From this center and others, the missionaries together with our church leaders have reached out in extensive evangelism, seeking to broadcast the good seed of God's word and establish a strong indigenous church. Their determination and discipline has been honored by the Lord himself. For today in many scattered communities, there are large congregations that are rising boldly to meet the evangelistic challenge around them under the leadership of capable and trained Ethiopian pastors. The German Lutherans now serve four main stations and several outlying clinics and have seen the establishment of some 80 congregations with a total membership of about 30,000 Christians. The next to come were the Norwegian Lutherans in 1948. This is the gateway to the mission at Hagre Salam. All who enter here are immediately surrounded, not merely by buildings and projects, but by the hands of practical Christian love, like these patients at the clinic, just a few of the thousands touched each year, and these schoolgirls in their handcraft class. They have felt the warmth and power of the helping hands of love a touch that has gone far beyond the mere call of duty to embrace the total need of the individual. It is this spirit of love, compassion, that has kept the missionary reaching out in ever-widening circles of service. The gospel does not always take wings. When traveling in my country, one is often very close to Mother Earth. 
my standpoint, it would almost appear that the wheel has some definite disadvantages. My people might seem to agree, but they do realize that these wheels bring them a happy word from visitors of the church. Once a year, the Sedamo tribes in South Ethiopia come together for an open-air rally. Many come on foot from far corners of the region. Hoofs and wheels bring special guests. They also hold church conferences and conventions, just as you do in your country, but often we meet outdoors. <laughs> If the music sounds a little strange, offbeat, I think you call it, well, maybe it is. God has opened the windows of heaven and poured out showers of blessing upon our people in the south. Thousands have turned from the power of Satan to the power of God. In fact, our problem is how to teach all the new converts. Since 1948, the Norwegian Lutheran Mission, working in the two most southern provinces, has been able to establish 11 mission stations to serve the three million people of this area. Reaching out from these centers, we have seen, under God's blessing, the establishment of 192 organized congregations with a combined membership of over 13,000 Christians. Yes, God is moving too fast for the faint of heart but I pray that we keep up with his pace. Then in 1957, we were joined by the American Lutherans. In the town of Debrezate, they are working in close cooperation with other Lutheran missions, as they are in other places and programs. The big thing here is the Ethiopian Evangelical College which has one of the highest ratings of any school in Ethiopia. Students come from all parts of the country. These students are going out to demonstrate not against something, but for someone. These Christian students are members of a unique group called the Welfare Club. They meet after school on their own time and plan programs for witnessing in the community. On this day, they were to visit in homes where a member of the family was ill. A practical way to demonstrate the love of Christ. In the town of Desi, the fourth largest city in Ethiopia, the American Lutheran Mission opened a new work, also among students. They saw the need in this major education center and wisely moved to meet this need by opening a youth hostel where boys could live in a Christian atmosphere. The hostel is directed by one of our young men who is a graduate of one of our church schools. These students don't find it difficult to thank God for their food or they count all their blessings. They have been served in Gera and Wat, a dish they love, consisting of unleavened flat bread, which is dipped into peppery hot gravy. But man shall not live by bread alone. After the meal, the living bread is broken and shared together. Diligence in homework gives promise of a bright tomorrow. For those still not reached, there is the youth center where they can come for wholesome fun and friendship and where they can talk of their problems and find new answers. 
this ministry is being expanded just as rapidly as new facilities can be provided. In Wuchali, 200 acres were given to our church by His Imperial Majesty for the establishment of a community center or village where families can live for a year and attend classes in animal husbandry, agriculture, carpentry, education, and sanitation. At the clinic, they get expert medical care and, as always, the touch of love. One outstanding aspect of the program was the water project. With the volunteer labor of some 300 people, this community became one of the first in this area to have running tap water. The work in Waldia. From the very start, it was the declared purpose of the American Lutheran Mission and its missionaries to work with, under, and through the church to help Ethiopians help themselves physically and spiritually. In Waldia and elsewhere, what they declared has been demonstrated. They are working through the church. A missionary pastor was called by the Synod and all local ministries are under the administration of the church. If we are to have a strong, spiritual church, the people must be able to read, especially God's Word. The adult literacy program will greatly benefit the church itself as only 10% of my people are literate. In Waldia, Market Day attracts vast crowds from all the outlying areas. Some show off their ponies, others an elaborate hairdo achieved with the aid of liberal applications of butter. But most just come to buy and sell. Rock salt is a common item of purchase. If one would reach the people, one must go where the people are. So the pastor and two local brethren, with the aid of a loudspeaker, proclaim the good news. It is like the feeding of the 5,000 all over again. Even the medical work, including the outpatient's clinic, has been brought under the board of medicine of the local synod. The results have been, first, to make the church feel its evangelistic responsibility to reach the patients of the clinic. Second, to free the missionary doctor for his specialized work. And third, to deeply involve our people. From the very beginning, the hospital has been served by an Ethiopian administrator, while the missionary personnel, both doctors and nurses, have headed the dresser training program. This doctor, typical of most others, is an able instructor who explains things very clearly and concisely. Instruction and practical training mixed with Christian love work miracles among my people. In addition to the normal care of the patients in the hospital and the surgery and the heavy teaching schedule, the doctor also serves three outlying clinics. The government often asks the doctor to investigate rumors of epidemics as far away as the Donakil Desert. Although the Waldia area has been called the witch doctor center of Ethiopia, and many people go to the witch doctors first and are not used to modern methods of medicine, our clinics are picking up in attendance and gaining in public acceptance. They also provide on-the-spot training for the assisting dressers who learn through actual observation how to diagnose and then prescribe and prepare the proper medicine. In Adua, the church operates a model eighth grade elementary school in cooperation with the American Lutheran Mission and the Swedish Evangelical Mission. Education in my country is still in its elementary stages, 
with under 5% of the school age population attending school. Mission schools teach the government prescribed curriculum and seek to develop a strong sense of national purpose. The students of the Teacher Training Institute relax while the Indian principal and two teachers watch. These young student teachers are a large part of my country's future hope. The school graduates 20 teachers every year. It seeks to stimulate among them creative thinking and independent study. At Selectlika, the mission has another elementary school staffed entirely with Ethiopian teachers. They have also opened a much needed hospital. Medical service in my country is limited. There is only one doctor for every 96,000 people. In this operation, the anesthetist and assistant, as well as this trained X-ray technician, illustrate the thoroughness of the national training program. Isn't it always better to put 10 men to work than try to do the work of 10 men? The most interesting and perhaps the most unique aspect of the work at Seleklika is the agricultural farm and school. Each year, from six to 10 farmers are selected from agricultural villages in the province of Tigre and attend classes on subjects ranging from seed improvement to the better breeding of livestock. There are as many cattle in my country as people. In the north, the land is overgrazed. The cattle are usually underfed. And as this calf found out, milk production is extremely low. My people have not had much experience with machinery. But since maintaining machinery may prove decisive in modern efficient farming, the volunteer worker of the World Brotherhood Exchange Program instructs carefully. Unquestionably, the training of our people is the secret of progress in the work of the church. But there is another secret of equal importance, a single-hearted emphasis on evangelism. Missionaries have zealously reached out to new areas, planting the good seed in virgin soil, even though it has meant personal sacrifice and separation from loved ones. Working out from Waldia, this young missionary heads for the Donakil Plains. He goes not only as an ambassador of Christ, but as the advance agent of the church. His progress through rough, rugged country does have its ups and downs. The power of the wheel is tested all the way. The Donakil Plains are a semi-desert area of low precipitation and support tribes of nomadic and pastoral people who move with their animals in search of grass and water. Making friends and winning the confidence of such a people takes time and tact. After greeting the chief's son and his companions, our missionary asks concerning village life. Is the chief well? Are the people happy? Is there sickness? Then he answers questions about his own family and work. Gradually, barriers begin to break down and communication is established. Later, at the village well, friendship is cemented as the chief's son and the missionary draw water together. Fear and suspicion dissipate in the sweat of doing this task together. 
Conversation soon flows like water as the missionary also works at learning the language. Village life moves slowly, and much of it revolves around the village well. The Danakil is fiercely proud and often hostile to strangers, but the well is neutral ground. These smiles mean that the missionary is welcome in their village. Camping out or roughing it is often necessary in establishing a new work. But there are some compensations, if you like wildlife, that is. The struggle for life goes on also in the animal kingdom. Some wait to profit from the losers. In this barren country, a small school has been started. By the grace of God, it will be the beginning of new things for these people. By reaching out vigorously and cooperating closely with its sister missions, the American Lutheran Mission, which started work in Ethiopia in 1957, now has established seven centers of work and several outlying clinics. From the very outset, its leaders worked for the formation of a united ministry. They were not interested in merely uniting the various missions into one large missionary operation. Rather, they wished to see all the local congregations united in one strong national church, with the missions working through that church. Today, we are all together in the Ethiopian Evangelical Church, Mekani Jesus, 60,000 members. The English ministry of the International Lutheran Church in Addis Ababa is a direct and rather distinctive outgrowth of that movement. And the seminary in Addis Ababa is another excellent expression of our unity. These young men grappling with Greek will be the future leaders of the church. They are themselves being trained by a competent staff of missionaries and Ethiopians who have a vital vision of Christ and his church. The seminary will, under God, transmit this vision to another generation. The daily chapel services help to develop and deepen commitment. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Looking at these serious young faces, one feels that the Ethiopian Evangelical Church, Mekani Jesus, formed in 1958, will be just what the name implies, a place where Jesus dwells in full power. Having laid a firm foundation of spiritual unity, we are able to start building together for the future, particularly in some of the thrilling new ministries, such as literature. Our literature program is headed up by a capable young administrator. New material is first carefully planned, then printed. Christian printed matter for my people is one of the great needs of the hour. It is almost a truism to say that a reading church is a learning, living, giving church. Already over 100 different books and pamphlets have been prepared. This mobile unit is part of a massive adult literacy campaign designed to cover all of Ethiopia. 476 schools operating in eight provinces are reaching 60,000 people. The slogan, each one, teach one, is the theme of our program. On the western outskirts of Addis Ababa, we have one of the most powerful Christian radio stations in the world, Radio Voice of the Gospel. It represents our golden opportunity, not only to proclaim Christ to the whole of Ethiopia, but almost to the entire continent of Africa, to the 100 million Arabs in the Near East, and to large sections of Asia.
The station is owned and operated by the Lutheran World Federation and is affiliated in broadcasting with the Coordinating Committee for Christian Broadcasting. Dr. Sigurdaske is the director of this extensive program. About 160 persons are employed here at the Central Studios. The professional and technical staff come from at least 10 different countries and as many denominations. Programs in 17 languages are produced at the 14 regional studios, located from Ceylon to Nigeria, from Madagascar to Iran. Some are produced in the local studio. Programs vary in style, appeal, and language. A Christmas meditation in Amharic, Ethiopia's official language. The talk of the town program, also in Amharic. A newscast in Swahili. A French cultural program. Et l'Algérie signait le plus important accord passé entre l'ancienne puissance coloniale. An English educational commentary. Airport. There is a tight and cramped feeling. The airport runway is surrounded on three sides by water, and one gets the eerie feeling as the plane is about to land that you're headed right for the drink. An Amharic dramatization of the story of the man born blind, as recorded in John's Gospel. 30% of the programs are directly evangelistic. 70% are of an educational and cultural nature. The transmitting station is located 25 miles out of Addis Ababa and is a most impressive site. With huge antenna towers rising over 400 feet and tons of heavy cables stretched between one of the highest pulpits in the world. The station operates two 100,000 watt shortwave transmitters and one 1,000 watt medium wave transmitter. Over six miles of tape are fed through the recorders every day. The master control room is a professional's paradise but an amateur's trial. To ensure the clearest possible reception for the one billion potential listeners in 30 countries or over one third of the world's population, the transmitters get a final tuning. No wonder this operation has been described as strategically the most important project ever undertaken by the Protestant Church. Mapigano yangalia kindelea kati ya India na Pakistan ambako viongozi wa nchi hizo sanbet min do na tau umti rabbi alu tlikno yidegmo min yegziamir tamir bala rabbi lumunu yinni masala talak sira Radio voice of the gospel is surely a miracle of God Another miracle it seemed to me was the third All-Africa Lutheran Conference, which convened in one of Addis Ababa's most beautiful buildings, Africa Hall. The delegates to the conference came from 12 countries in Africa, with observers from several more, and represented many distinct and diverse cultures. Of the 200 delegates, 110 were Africans, over half of them were laymen rather than clergymen and seven women officially participated. The magnificent stained glass window wall in the foyer was executed by Ethiopia's most famous artist, Afwerk Tekle. The spiritual fellowship of the delegates at the conference was like fragrant incense. It was a striking and singular demonstration of Christian love and oneness that was by no means lost on the press and people of my country. 
this conference chamber, so perfectly suited to our purpose, is the headquarters of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. The delegations were seated alphabetically, starting with Cameroon on the right, and working in order around the horseshoe. Perhaps the most colorful delegation was that of the Malagasy Republic. I need hardly add that the conference was completely colorblind. The great moment came when His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I entered. He was most warmly welcomed. The Emperor is a legendary figure in our country. He probably has more practical experience in statescraft than any African leader today. Best of all, he is a devoted, worshipping Christian. After welcoming the delegates, the Emperor spoke of the Church's responsibility and great opportunity. Apparently, I was not alone in thinking it an inspiring address with his words of encouragement for the continued work of the Christian Church in my country. Dr. Schultz from Minneapolis President of the Lutheran World Federation officially opened the conference. Mr. Chairman, Bishop Phoseus, delegates and observers at this third All Africa Lutheran Conference, it is my privilege on behalf of the conference to declare it officially opened in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A spirit of prayerful expectancy pervaded the session. I felt we were on the verge of something big. Then the official welcome from the president of the host Ethiopian church. Mr. Chairman, fellow delegates, I welcome you into Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Finally, His Imperial Majesty, with members of the royal family, rose to leave. Later, all the delegates were invited to an official reception at the palace. It was the social highlight of the conference. The colorful costumes rivaled Joseph's coat. The delegates were quite awed by the regal surroundings and the presence of our well-known and distinguished emperor. He personally greeted every delegate. But the serious work of the conference still had to be faced. The whole question of the ministry of the church in a rapidly changing Africa was re-examined and re-evaluated. The Ethiopian Evangelical Church, Mekani Jesus, must play a vital role in this period of change. This is the Lord's work. He invites us all to share in the work that touches souls for eternity. We must plan now. We must pray now. We must act now. Today in my country, a door for effective ministry is wide open, but there are many enemies. The ancient psalmist prayer echoes down the years. Let Ethiopia hasten to stretch out her hands to God. Amen. <laughs>